Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and thank you for joining me. As I take advantage of the fact that the world is focused on ivermectin because of World Ivermectin Day. Now, this actually is in the past. It was on the 24th of July, and so I'm talking about this about a week after it has passed. And primarily was because I didn't want to get too caught up in the factions that exist between whether or not it works or whether or not it doesn't work. I'm far more interested in the science. And the science is oftentimes a little bit more complex than just arguing about different perspectives. So the first thing that I would want to do when I think about the science around COVID-19 is focus on where did ivermectin come from? And I've got here a lovely paper that was published in 2011 calling ivermectin the wonder drug from Japan, the human use perspective. And it's highlighting here that it was discovered in the 1970s and it's a derivative of a bioactive compound from a bacteria called avermectin, which is a single microorganism isolated in Tokyo, Japan, in Japanese soil. And so this is the origin of where ivermectin came from. Essentially, they were looking for um, bioactive compounds from bacteria that could inhibit various um, parasitic agents. In truth, they were looking much more broadly than that. And they found that avermectins, which then became ivermectin, had the capacity to inhibit parasites in and around these bacteria. Now, you have to remember that this bacteria is soil-based, so it's normally in the soil. And because you have different parasites in the soil that use nutrients, this was part of the mechanism that this bacteria used to protect its environment. And so it's purely coincidental that they found this very valuable um, product that came out of this interaction. And it's important to highlight as well, as they say, there are only a few drugs that can seriously lay claim to the title of a wonder drug, including penicillin and aspirin. And ivermectin is in that category. It's a remarkable drug because of its versatility, safety, and beneficial impact it has had across the world. Hundreds of millions of the world's poorest people have benefited from this drug. So it's important to note that this drug also got a Nobel Prize in 2015, or the discoverers of it, because it had such a significant impact with regards to reducing the impact of a number of very serious diseases in the third world. One of them was river blindness, for which uh, ivermectin technically got rid of the disease almost completely or the complications of the disease. And it works on multiple other parasites. And this is what I think led to the confusion around COVID-19 because of this question mark about this parasitic action of ivermectin. And so before I go into any more details about the confusion, I'll take you back in time to when this was an issue. And we have here an article, this was from the BBC, this is in October 2021, how false science created a COVID-19 miracle drug, they said. And this was largely because they were finding that vaccine opponents, okay, were championing ivermectin, and therefore going against the recommendations about vaccines. So you have to remember at this time, this was October 2021, it was the rollout of the vaccine campaign. We were already about um, almost eight months into it, and they needed people to become vaccinated. And they didn't need anybody, members of social media groups, trying to get hold of the drug, advocating uses, versions that were in animals. And this was a big issue at the time across the first world. And it's important to make sure that we understand that at that point in October 2021, vaccines still hadn't reached to most of the third world. And so it was a problem. It was a first world problem. And to be exact, what they were saying is that they were saying that in effect here, indirect harm 
could come from giving people a false sense of security, especially if they chose ivermectin instead of seeking hospital treatment or for COVID or getting vaccinated in the first place. Well, they weren't really offering hospital treatment until you got very sick, so that didn't count. And what effectively they wanted was for people to get vaccinated. And so I'll have to take you now to the updated information that came from the NIH. So this is what they have said. This was last updated in March in 2023. And they highlighted that ivermectin is an antiparasitic drug used to treat several neglected tropical diseases. They've highlighted here that the mechanism or the proposed mechanism of action was that ivermectin is antiviral. It was shown to inhibit replication of SARS-CoV-2 in cell cultures. However, they thought that the plasma concentrations that would be needed to do that would be up to a hundredfold higher than that used in humans. And so the panel recommended against the use of ivermectin for the treatment of COVID-19. And you can see that there quite boldly in their recent recommendation. And yeah, that's fine. They had looked at a number of studies and the link to this will show you the PDF and the studies that they've looked at. They've looked at the TOGETHER study. Um, they've looked at COVID out. They have looked at active six. And in all of those, as far as they were concerned, there was not enough evidence that ivermectin was beneficial. Now, it's important to note that the um, proponents for ivermectin would say that these studies didn't use adequate doses, probably not uh, in terms of adequate time. And even with my discussion with uh, Dr. Fernando Valiero from Honduras, he had used ivermectin with great effect in a combination protocol. And so you're seeing across the world that ivermectin seems to have an impact, but not necessarily so from these studies that they were doing. And this is why they had gone against the recommendation. So I'll highlight for the sake of uh, the social media platforms, they need me to follow the recommended guidance and the recommended guidance is not to use ivermectin for the treatment of COVID-19. Important to understand that from my perspective, I am looking at the science. And so I'm going to take us back to an important piece of the puzzle. And at the time, I was looking at autoimmunity. So the immune system being the driver for severe disease in COVID-19. And so anything that impacted on that immune response, in my view, could potentially have benefit in the context of COVID-19. And so that was where I was interested, and that was what I was looking for. And when we look carefully, this is again from the paper from 2011. And in this case, it's talking about the mode of action of, uh, of ivermectin. Sorry, I'll just get it back into to context here. The mode of action for ivermectin um, in helping us to understand a little bit more. Let's just take it back here again. So I'll make this full screen. Mode of action here. So initially, when they were working on ivermectin, they believed that it blocked neurotransmitter, neurotransmitters, particularly the GABA-gated chloride channels. And this then had an impact on the function of the nematodes and caused them to die. And that was their initial thought. But they found that actually that didn't seem to be the only part of the picture. They found ivermectin exerted a peculiar effect that remained poorly understood. So the immune response to filiary infections was complex, which involved T helper 2 type systems, which de dealt with the larva um, uh, for, the, for this particular parasite. But in order to get rid of the adult worms, it needed a combination of T helper 1 and helper 2 pathways to be involved. What they found was that the adult female worms were able to manipulate this immune regulatory environment in the human body, possibly by interleukin-10, and therefore survive. Therefore, they were effectively hiding from the immune system. What it seems that ivermectin was able to do 
was to have an impact on this T helper 1, T helper 2 pathways so that they could no longer hide and the immune system was then able to get rid of these uh, worms. Really critical. So the minute I saw that and realized that ivermectin had the impact of being able to immune, uh, to mod modulate the immune environment, I recognized that, yeah, therefore, from an autoimmune perspective, that made perfect sense. But I still couldn't explain why it would work better than, say, steroids or other drugs that we had that would be used. So I remained objective, not criticizing ivermectin, but just observing who used it and what kind of results they would get. That's the science around how things work. My perspective on ivermectin only changed significantly in January of 2023. And from a scientific point of view, as I said, my question is not just whether or not it works, but why does it work? Because the, the reason that it works could have an impact for other drugs that could even work better. So this is what changed my perspective. This was a paper from January 2023 in Cell, and it was looking at SARS-CoV-2 replication in airway epithelia. And they had essentially found that they infected uh, an organoid with the virus, and then they observed carefully to see what would happen with regards to the infection. And this was a really fascinating piece of research because they took it step by step, infected the cells, and then observed carefully what would happen inside these cells. 